Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Uh, when I'm not here online making gambling videos, uh, I also practice law for a living, uh, both litigation and family law. My firm website is RichardDwyer.com. Right? I'm also someone who is, or at least views himself, as a libertarian. Now let's talk about this Donald Sterling situation a little bit further. I know Bill Maher has made some comments about his concerns about private statements said in private to your lover, how they could serve as the basis for punishment from the sports league, right? Let's talk about that as well as some other things. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me say this, my own background. I'm a litigator and a divorce attorney, Stanford Cardinal, uh, with my own small firm here in Northern California. I'm in Silicon Valley. I've fought on behalf of women I'm fighting on behalf of women right now who are trying to protect their interest in community property. Let me say that while I have no issue in Donald Sterling being encouraged to sell his interest in the Los Angeles Clippers, I do take exception and actually oppose efforts by the league to force out his separated wife, Shelley Sterling. Shelley Sterling's ownership interest in the Clippers is separate and distinct from Donald Sterling's interest. Right? At no time did Shelley Sterling ratify or authorize Donald Sterling to make the negative comments that Donald Sterling made. I don't see how she can be forced out based on idiotic statements that he made. Keep in mind too, the couple is headed toward marital dissolution. We knew that before any statements were leaked to the press, we knew that Shelley was actually suing the mistress, right, for the return of some of the community property that Donald Sterling gave his mistress without Shelley's authorization. In other words, we already have proof, we already have a course of conduct that shows that Donald Sterling was doing things without his wife's consent or authorization. Absent some evidence that Shelley Sterling participated in uh, Donald Sterling's idiotic statements, racist statements, to his mistress, I would say that the league is out of bounds, quite frankly, in trying to get her to sell her interest in the team. Right? She's already offered to uh, be a silent partner to whoever takes over Donald's 50% interest. Right? I believe that should be enough to satisfy the league. Let's change gears for a second too, right? I certainly have no intention, and I used to go to Clipper games years ago, haven't for several years, but uh, I have no intention of ever going to another Clipper game as long as Donald Sterling has an ownership interest in the team. And I mean ever because I don't want to financially support racists, right? But understand, my decision is really a market-based solution. Fans like me, advertisers who don't want to um, have their products advertised by organizations owned by racists, I believe they're all free to move away from the Clippers, right? I want Donald Sterling to be punished. Here's the question. And it's a big one. Does the league have the right 
to force Donald Sterling to sell his team under these circumstances. Right? To all the lawyers out there, let me make the argument here that the league does it. The NBA Constitution is actually here online. I know this is going to be an unpopular position with many of my subscribers. But either the owners have delegated the authority to the league to terminate the ownership interests of other team owners based on racist and terrible statements, or it hasn't. Right? The league's authority is really authority it has been delegated by the owners. Right? It's not some separate and independent authority. Rather, it's the authority given the league by the owners through the constitution of the league, a written document. Right? I believe in freedom of contract. People can get together and enter into contracts that define their rights. That's what the owners have done in the NBA. So, with regard to the punishment that can be doled out for statements, right, and keep in mind, I'll concede the Constitution has a termination section, right, that discusses things like gambling and owners fixing games. You can get terminated for that kind of conduct, no question about it. But for idiotic statements, I believe the paragraphs that apply, and I encourage again lawyers watching this video to review the Constitution, can be found in Article 35A. It's paragraph C and D. Right? Let me read them to you. These are the paragraphs, in my opinion, that apply to idiotic statements made by owners, such as the racist statements, the clearly racist statements made by Donald Sterling. First paragraph C, and again this is Article 35A of the NBA Constitution. This is the controlling contract slash document. It reads, any person who gives, makes, issues, authorizes, or endorses any statement having or designed to have an effect prejudicial or detrimental to the best interests of basketball or of the association or of a member or its team shall be liable to a fine not exceeding one million dollars to be imposed by the commissioner. The member whose owner, officer, manager, coach, or other employee has been so fined shall pay the amount of the fine should such person fail to do so within 10 days of its imposition. Right now let's move to paragraph D which reads the commissioner shall have the power to suspend for a definite or indefinite period or to impose a fine not exceeding a million dollars or inflict both such suspension and fine upon any person who in his opinion shall have been guilty of conduct prejudicial or detrimental to the association. Now let me just say First, paragraph C uses the phrase, any statement. There is no special classification or immunity given to private statements. So I would argue that under this Constitution, which Donald Sterling agreed to be bound by, he can be punished by the league for private statements. Okay, with all due respect to Bill Maher, 
I know Bill Maher is really talking in terms of a citizen's relationship to a public government, right? That's governed by the United States Constitution, right? Here, we're talking about something different. We're talking about a private association where Donald Sterling has agreed in writing pursuant to this Constitution that he can be punished for any statement that hurts the league and we know that his racist statements clearly did because of course advertisers pulled their advertisements from the Clippers and of course the players were so upset they were threatening not to play in games involving the Clippers right so I'll say this I do believe that Donald Sterling pursuant to his power to contract agreed beforehand that he could be punished for any statement public or private right I believe paragraph C of article 35 a gives the NBA the power to punish Donald Sterling for his private statements I understand Sterling is fighting the fine I believe he faces an uphill battle there right but but the word termination is used in other parts of the Constitution right it's clear that a member can be terminated for things like fixing games but interestingly enough in paragraph C and D of article 35 a not only is there no mention of the commissioner or the league having the power to terminate an owner's ownership interest for terrible statements but in fact the power of the commissioner is further limited in terms of how much he can find an owner for terrible statements right the fines can't exceed a million dollars right paragraph C and paragraph D only allow fines up to a million dollars I would argue that this Constitution which does not say that an owner can be terminated for even racist statements right you can be suspended indefinitely but that's different than being forced to give up your team right I would argue that the owners have not given the league the power to force an owner to sell his team based on idiotic racist statements I don't believe the NBA has that power right what I believe is that Donald Sterling the racist that he is and I believe he's a racist right the racist in my opinion I'll give myself some legal wiggle room here Donald Sterling who's a racist in my opinion has grounds to fight the NBA's decision to terminate him right I believe if he wants he can hold on to the team don't get me wrong fans like me won't be in the area code of Clipper games I'm guessing many advertisers won't come close to the Clippers right that's a market solution that's not a contractual solution but I don't believe Donald Sterling ever agreed nor do I believe his fellow NBA owners ever agree to give the league the power to terminate a member's ownership interest based on this kind of conduct that's how I see it right I believe that uh, the NBA Constitution has certain limitations right if the NBA intended to give the commissioner or the league the power to terminate owners 
based on idiotic racist statements. I believe the Constitution would have clearly spelled that out. Right? It does not. So as terrible as I believe Donald Sterling is, I believe he, under this Constitution, has the right to continue to own the team. Just like the players, in my opinion, have the right to boycott playing in Clipper games. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com or at my firm website, richarddwyer.com, whichever you prefer. Leave your comments. Leave your thoughts. Right? I believe as well intended as the NBA is. And as much as I certainly won't be following the Clippers while Sterling owns part of the team, I believe the NBA is being a little bit tyrannical here in trying to, one, force Shelly Sterling, who hasn't done anything, to sell her interest in the team, and two, in trying to force Donald Sterling to sell his interest in the team. I don't think the league has the legal power under this Constitution to terminate his ownership interest or her ownership interest. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.